Hi, I'm Richard Lanehart, and this is the Amedio Inc. JR Hexatone Pro Video Quick Start Manual. And the purpose of this manual is to help you get quickly started in learning how to do your own programming in JR Hexatone Pro. So first of all, make sure you have the current version downloaded because that has a session in it we want to use. This is version 1.1 currently. So if you don't have that current version, go to the Apple iTunes Store and download it. So once you have it, let's load that session. 01 Quick Start 01 and listen to it. So this is just a simple drum pattern here that is set up to let us show you how things work here in JR Exitone Pro. So you see that we have six hexagons here in the center. You can think of those six hexagons as each being an individual oscillator into which you load a sample. And so what we're going to do first of all to simplify this is go into sound mode, pressing SND, and tap two through six to disable them. Make sure that they're all turned off and gray. And that means that we are going to have just that one bass drum playing. So by itself, what we can do now is select it by going into setup mode, tapping that a couple of times. When we do, it's now selected and we can hear the sample that's there. We can tap its choose sample button, go into the file manager and choose a different sound. This is how you load samples into oscillators in JR Hexatone Pro. So we have a filter down here that lets us pick different categories. And what we're going to do is go to BD for bass drum, tap it to listen. And click the arrow to select it and load it in there. And that's how you swap samples out in the oscillators in JR Hexatone Pro. All right, next we're going to take a look at timing values here and how that affects the basic programming of properties in the grid itself here. So in the hexagon, we have, as you can see, a series of hexagons that are outlined in red. And when we play, again, listening to just the bass drum here, you'll see that it kind of lights up when it gets to those red hexagons. That's telling us that a sound is happening there. So only hexagons that have a red border around them will produce sound when the oscillator travels through them. The other hexagons around there can affect the rate at which it travels through, but essentially only those things with red borders are going to make sound. So one thing we can do if we want to increase the beat here is just add more borders here. So let's tap the sound button. I just missed it there. Missed it there too and there. So now we have all four in a row with red borders. So everyone is sounding. Now, the, those are actually sounding in eighth notes and the reason being that even though we're at a tempo of 122, we're now subdividing the time base for this particular oscillator with this property down here that's called timing. So if I take this, tap on it and drag it up and just set it to one, we're in setup mode here, set it to one to one. Now, if I play this, what that means is that every hexagon here in the oscillator's path is going to be a quarter note. So this is changing the timing, essentially, of the grid as that oscillator passes through there. So now, if I wanted to have every other quarter note sound, I would do it like that. So as you can see, there's an interaction between the timing property here and the grid placements of these red bordered hexagons that make the actual sound. Let's go back again. Set that to one half again. So now it's actually eighth notes in there, but it's playing every other eighth note, so it sounds like quarter notes. Now we've got eighth notes. Now we've got sixteenth notes. And there are our quarter notes again. So that's how that works. The timing here, this timing value, 
changes the rate at which the oscillator travels through the hexagon and determines how this hexagon travel here is going to be a subdivision of our basic tempo up here. So our basic tempo was 122. At 1 to 1, each of those represents a quarter note. At 1 to 2, each of those represents an eighth note, and so on. All right, now, you probably have seen other sessions that you've loaded where the paths of the oscillators have gone all over the place in seemingly unpredictable ways. And here, ours are being very predictable. The reason for that is that these paths have black hexagons protecting them, so to speak, on either side from wandering off into the larger hexagon field here. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that there are black hexagons on both sides and some lighter gray hexagons here in the path itself. So to change that, you go into grid mode, tap the grid button, and now by tapping those individual hexagons, you can change their color. And by changing their color, you're changing the probability that the oscillator is going to travel over there. So what we're going to do now is just, in grid mode, tap these hexagons that are on the sides here. We're going to tap them again to make a lighter one here, and we'll do a lighter one there as well. And now watch what happens. What's happening here now is that the oscillator is wandering off. The lighter hexagon here means that the probability of going there is much higher than it is for a medium gray one. So in fact, the oscillator is going over this way and is now being diverted over here into this area where there are the two lighter hexagons. So it's being, the probability is that it's going over that way. But these don't have any sound making borders on them. So we're going to enable one of those here. And now listen to that. So that has completely changed the pattern and made it much more syncopated because we're changing the probability of the motion here. So now this is going here. It's taking an eighth note there, basically. It's going there, making a sound, coming back, bouncing back, and so forth. Now we can again change probabilities of what that's going to do by going back to grid, tapping that one there, and now let's go back to sound and make a sound happen on this one. So now, because these are equal colors, there's an equal probability that the path is going to travel one way or another. And when it does, it changes the pattern itself that gets played. And that's how Hexatone makes its own patterns. It generates them by sending the oscillators down through these paths here. And those paths then determine how often the beat is going to sound, how often the sample is going to sound. You'll also notice that when we're doing so, that it also always cycles back on the four on the downbeat of the one, rather, in 4-4, back to the center and starts a new pattern out so that there will always be some sound happening, at least that's related to 4-4, no matter how diverse the oscillator path gets traveling here so that you won't completely lose sense of where the beat is. All right, now let's take what we've learned and modify some of these other sequences here. First of all, let's go here, sound mode, and turn on 2 and 5. Listen to those. And now let's change the sound here by going into setup mode. Let's go to oh, snare drums. Choose that one. Keep that hi-hat there. Next, we'll go into grid mode. Give it us a listen there and let us open up some of the sounds here a little bit. Go back to sound, enable a couple of these, disable a couple others to add a little rhythmic variety in there. <laughs> 